Hello everybody and welcome to another general vlog video. I spoke and scared Snoopy. <laughs> so we, we are one step closer to finding our homestead, our forever home. Um, I have my, I'm not going to turn the things around, but I have letters here ready to go out. I'm going to kind of walk you through how I do this. So the first thing that I did was I'm not going to show you names and addresses, but I wrote, okay, let, let, let's, let's back up and start from the beginning. Hello everybody. This no, not, not that far. Okay. So I know of these houses personally. I drive past these houses almost every day. They have been empty. Some have been empty for 20 years. Some have been empty for longer than that. Some have I never paid attention. So I've got to watch Snoopy over here. He's wanting to be on camera. He doesn't feel good tonight. I think he got into the litter box. So he has an upset stomach. Um, <laughs> anyways. So I got on the auditor's map, which I'm going to show you here in a little bit. And I looked him up on the map. And I clicked on the tax assessment to get their mailing addresses for their taxes. And then I send them a, a handwritten letter with a with an envelope and then an envelope in it. So if they want to get back to me, it doesn't cost them anything for them to write me back. Um, and that's just that that's how I go about doing it. And in hopes, you know, some of these places have been empty for years. There might be a reason that they're empty. It could just be that. It's something that was left to them and they don't really care about. Or maybe it's something that maybe they bought 20 years ago thinking to fix it up and just never got around to it. So they may or may not sell. I don't know. So let me show you how I go about Let me make sure everything's upside down here. Because I don't need you guys seeing the addresses that I'm sending it to. And it's got my address on it and everything. Um, it wouldn't be fair to the people. So I'm going to... Hmm. Well, Snoopy's wanting to lay down. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but Snoopy's wanting to lay down right on top of me. I'm trying to figure out the best way to set you guys up. And I think it would be right over here on this table. Let's see how this looks. Yes, it would be. All right. Now, I'm not going to be able to zoom in or anything like that, but I'll bring you guys up close enough. Hopefully you can see. Please excuse my screensaver. It's still a Christmas one. So let's get you over here. Make sure that you're in the area. So the first thing, now this is how I do it in my area. I would assume your area will be similar to the same, but I don't know. So let's go to open up your web browser, whichever it may be. I happen to be using Google. And in my, I live in Logan County. So I'm going to type in Logan County. Ohio and right there's auditors map so I'm gonna go on the auditors map and for an example we're going to use my property that I lost through the divorce but it's still in my name so I can show you guys that pretty easy all right so we're gonna go right here to where it says real estate map And it opens it right up to the map. Now I know that I live in Washington County. I'm just going to keep double clicking until I start recognizing roads. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's world class plastic. So we're going to go up in here because I know the area. Oh. Let's see. And there's my road right there. It's Hancock. So I'm going to keep blowing it up, which on my computer, you just double click and it blows it up. And now I'm starting to get into a little bit more of a detailed area where I can see. And I know that I live on the corner of Hancock and Indian back one. So right there, you can see the address. I click on that land. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I right click on that land. Well, nothing happened. Okay, there we go. And it tells me my name and where it's located. Then you will click on your partial number up here. And what that will do is now bring it up and give you the contact information. This is where the state sends your taxes to. So if you don't live at this house and you live at a different house, it's going to give you the different house's address. That's what you want. That's how you find out where you need to send it to. So I would quickly pencil this down and that's what I would do to, you know, to send the letter to. Now I would close out of that, close my computer. Now that I've got just, you know, say I wrote it down. Now let's get you guys tilted back here just a little bit. And I would simply state, you know, hello, Mr. or Mrs., whatever their names are. I'm writing in regards to the land that you own on give, you don't have to give the exact address, but you can give like, say it's on County Road 95. I'm contacting you, I'm writing you about the land and house that you own on 95. Now, one of the things I try to do is not put down the home you own because it's not their home. It's just a house because they don't live there. If they did live there, then I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know why you're trying to buy a house that somebody lives in, but these are houses that do not have for sale signs on it. These are houses that I know have been, like I said, the one over here on 94, it's been at least 20, 25 years that since I've ever seen it lived in. The one on the main road this way, uh, it hasn't been lived in since back in the 80s. And the condition of the other ones, now they are in my area, but I don't pass them every day. So I've just been noticing, you know, with over the last three, four, five years that they've been empty. And, you know, disrepair has come to them. The things that I can afford, or I'm hoping that I can afford. So I had them all down on my list. You know, I've got my list here. And I sent them each a, an individual personalized letter just asking, you know, if they would be interested in selling. Apologize for bugging them. You know, sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. But in case you're interested in selling your house and land, I include, enclosed an envelope. And pre-do, you know, put a stamp on that envelope too. That way it don't cost them a dime. Because maybe they might just say, I ain't worried. Well, he's already got a envelope. Yeah, I'll write him back. Yeah, we want to sell it for $1.16 million. That's going to be my luck, right? So that's how I go about finding land. Now, there are other ways. You can just literally go out and ride around. But not everybody is really going to... For one, I can't afford the land and homes that are in a real estate. So I'm looking for individuals that are willing to sell. Some of these homes, they've thought about selling, but don't really want to get involved in it. And, oh, people are going to jew me down, and people are going to do this, and people are going... They don't want to deal with it. So with me coming to them, I might get a, yes, we would. Here's what we would like for it. And then I can take it from there. Uh, we are going to be doing a lot of what I call cold riding which is basically just windshield time. Uh, we're going to hit all the roads around me, uh, you know, within the school district, of course. We're going to, you know, just ride and look, ride and look, and ride and look. If we see vacant land that maybe at one time had been built on, uh, you know, I'll mark it down while I'm, you know, I'll stop, of course, I'm not, not while I'm driving, but I'll, I'll stop and... I, I'll mark it down. I may not know the address if it doesn't have a mailbox or anything, but I'll know the location. I'll say, okay, well, it's in between the Shepherd's Farm and 313. You know, both of those are completely made up, but that way I know where it's at. So when I come home and I look on my map, I know where to blow up and I know where to go look at 
you know, I can blow it up big enough that I can see it, and then I can go look at it. I can get the address that way, the person's name that way. Um, we might luck up and find some stuff for sale that we can afford, or we might have to do it all this way. And I mean, I'm sending out a handful now. So even if one of them get back with me as a possibility, it's well worth it. Now I could get all no's. I could get hatefulness. I could get people to say, stop bothering me. It's kind of intrusive. They didn't invite you to send them a letter, but most people don't look at it that way. Now, yeah, you can stop and ask neighbors, but I tell you what I found out on that. A lot of people don't think about an abandoned property beside of them or an abandoned house beside of them. It just is what it is. Then when you stop by and you start asking questions, they're like, hmm, that's connected to my property. Maybe I'll get a hold of them. Or, this has happened to me and fairly recently, you'll get people that'll tell you, no, I've already talked to them, they do not want to sell, they're very hateful. Then he ends up buying it. And I'm like, wow, you know, maybe I should have just went ahead and contacted these people. Uh, if you say something like, uh, yeah, you know, we're looking for this little farm and I've got 28 kids or however many kids you got, you know, their first thought is, oh, we don't want that many people living beside of us. Uh, no, that it's actually in an, an estate and they don't want to get rid of it or whatever excuse they might come up with. Uh, I've been through that too. Uh, in fact, one of them that I was looking at, I was told was in an estate couldn't be sold uh, and he sold it and that was because he had offered it to me at one price and sold it for almost triple of that can't blame him but I just kind of wish that he would have told me the truth from the beginning uh, I would have probably given him the price that he sold it to the other people for and this search and hunt would have already been over with but I just find it easier to go straight to the horse's mouth, so to speak. This is the way that I do it. I hope it works for you. Like, say if you live in um, Woodtop, Kentucky. You know, Woodtop County, Kentucky. And you just go to Woodtop County, Kentucky Auditor's Office. And look for their map section. Click on their map section blow it up until you find the location where you know where you're looking at and you can click on the partial number and it will give you the address that these are public records people it will give you the address that they send the taxes to every year uh, which really helps because you know only two of them that I'm contacting is actually the address of the home and one I don't understand because it's been vacant at least since mm, around 1987 86 87 88 somewhere thereabouts could even be as long as 90 but you're still looking at many 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 years and they still get their taxes there and they are caught up on their taxes that's another thing that you can look at on the auditor's map if there's taxes owed one of the farms that I'm looking at, well, the actual only farm that I'm looking at, and it's just about five acres of land. It's got the farm farm barn, a couple of them, a farmhouse. None of the other acreage around it goes with it. So, you know, they, they've subdivided it. Um, they're way behind on taxes. So I did a little research on it. I knew the guy's name. I searched it in and sure enough, I found him in the obituary. He had died about 12, 14 years ago. Maybe it wasn't that long. I think it was eight years ago. Yeah, I think it was eight years ago that he passed away. And on there it said, left behind, you know, children or whatever. And I did notice that there was at least three children. So... But nobody's paid taxes on it in the last eight years. 
and nobody's been out there to take care of it. The windows are all broke out now. You know, so it might be tied up in courts and stuff. Who knows? But there's that slim chance that might get a hold of me back and say, you know, yeah, that's left to me and my two brothers and we just can't bear the place. We don't want it. You know, yeah, we would sell it at a reasonable price. So there's always that chance and those are the chances that I'm taking. So these will get mailed out first thing in the morning. Um, I will take them to the post office myself and personally hand it to them. And this list will go up on my refrigerator. And as I hear back from them, I will mark it, you know, not interested in selling or way too high a price or they said contact me in the summertime or whatever the case may be. Then we're going to do a bunch of window time and see what we can find driving. I'll make up another list to do this with. And I'm, every month, I'm going to send out a handful of letters and just see what happens. So we are getting closer and closer and closer. We have six very good possibilities. <clears throat> and, you know, there's one in there I'm not crazy about, but I can make do with it. There's another one in there that needs a ton of work. I'm up for the challenge and the others are all pretty much dream homesteads for me, especially one. There's one in there that oh, I, I would just love to have, but it's got a lot of land and it's got a pond and it's got a house that can be refixed up and I just don't think it's going to be in my budget, but we'll see. There's always hope. There's always hope. So as long as you have hope and you have plans, your life can move forward. And that's what we're trying to do. Oh, and by the way, my kids love all of these houses. Absolutely. I mean, we've gone and looked at them several times. And a few of them I've done videos on. Uh, we'll get into that all later. So I think that's it. So if you guys like this video, please comment down below. Like and subscribe, and once you're subscribed, smash that bell notification. Go all the way up to the top and click all so you'll be notified on every single video that we post. Share us on your social media pages. Follow us on Facebook under General Vlog Video. And remember that when I ask you to subscribe, it's not like a magazine subscription. It's 100% free and does not cost a dime. It just helps our channel grow the same way a thumbs up helps our channel grow. With all that being said, hope you guys have a great night and even better tomorrow. I messed that all up, didn't I? My own ending, and I forgot it again. I hope you guys have a great day, even better tomorrow, and an awesome night. And we will see you on the next video. And remember, I may have showed you guys how I go about this and all that, but I'm still my own cameraman, which means I gotta get up close and personal and poke you guys in the ear to turn this thing off. With all that being said, Please, please, please be safe. And we'll catch you on the next video or the next live stream. Stick around, people. We're going to end up with a homestead. And the whole channel is going to change. We're going to have animals. We're going to have four-wheeler trails. We're going to have, oh, just anything you could possibly imagine. So I'm excited. So you guys follow along with us and see where our journey takes us. You guys have a great night.